Hi everyone, my name is Harley Coates and I'm here today to talk to you about the respiratory syncytial virus and how it affects humans. Um, has anyone ever heard of the virus? That's not surprising because it affects a large uh, group of the population, especially in um, underdeveloped countries. It affects about two thirds of the population <coughs> annually, so each year. And it has uh, affected my family two times specifically. So when I was about two months old, um, my mom noticed that I wasn't eating. I was having really labored breathing and I just had a really high fever all the time. So she took me to our pediatrician and we found out that I had RSC. So um, it had progressed to the stage of bronchitis. And so they were a little worried about a, a three month old, you know, having bronchitis. So they hospitalized me for about a week and they managed my symptoms, they got my fever down, they allowed my body to fight off the virus, but um, after I fought it off and I was good, my doctor said that I was gonna have some lasting effects to my immune system, so when I was a child I got sicker a lot easier and stuff like that, and I still do get sicker a lot easier. And um, it also affected my nephew Alex when he was about two to three months old, and his progressed to the stage of pneumonia, and he was in the hospital for a lot longer than I was because really not good for a two two month old to have pneumonia but he got through it and he is 11 now and he's wonderful okay so it's very important obviously because it's a disease it's a virus that likes to attack people that are weak so infants toddlers really old people or people that have like immune system problems and so basically I think of it as like that bully on the playground that likes to go after the weaker people because it knows they can't fight off the, the bully, so um, the virus wants a host that it can survive in the longest. It wants an optimal environment for itself. And it's not the virus itself that causes these, that, that causes death, like that causes all the bad stuff. It's the things that it leads to in your upper respiratory tract. So it's the bronchitis, the pneumonia, and the death because the body can't bite off those things and RSV at the same time. And so, like I said, two-thirds of the population um, experiences it in their first year of life, and 34 million people are touched by it in some way, mild cases, bad cases, stuff like that each year. Okay, so RSV is a paramyoxaviridae virus, which means that it is single-stranded negative sense, RNA, um, and then that breaks up into different kinds. So the paramyoxaviridae, which is um, a virus that attacks other parts of the body like your muscles and like your nasal cavity and stuff like influenza is a good example of it. So it's sore muscles, stuff like that. The, <coughs> the pneumonovirna specifically targets the upper respiratory tract of its host species just like RSV does. And um, as you can see, um, it's an RNA, it's RNA surrounded with three other proteins and then that is enclosed in a lipid envelope and then on the outside you see the attachment proteins and the fusion proteins which are vital for infecting the host and then this is the average life cycle of one of these viruses and as you can see the fusion and the attachment proteins attach to the outside of the cell it wants to affect, infect and then it is entered into the cell um, cytoplasm where replication and transcription occur and then after that occurs it's moved to a different part of the cell and then that's where the budding happens and it is um, it exits the cell wall and then it goes to the adjacent cells and infects them as well so it's just a process of infection okay and so this is the actual RSV virus as you can see it's very very similar to the paramyoxaviridae it's single stranded negative sense non segmented and as you can see there is RNA on the inside surrounded by the nucleocapsid protein, the phosphoprotein, and the RNA polymerase protein. And then on the outside, you have the attachment glycoprotein and the fusion protein. The glycoprotein is the bigger, um, the bigger figure up there because it has to attach first. It's the first thing that attaches. And then the fusion protein attaches and is entered into the cell. So this is the life cycle of RSV. As you can see, it's very similar to the schematic for the paramyxaviridae viruses. The RSV um, virus enters the cell membrane through um, fusion and attachment with its proteins. And then once it's inside, 
the RNA is packaged itself and transcription and replication occur. And then once that occurs, it's moved to a different part of the cell. And once their budding occurs and it exits the cell and the fusion proteins and the glycoproteins are pushed to the surface of the cell. Okay, so initial attachment and, and fusion are vital for the survival of the virus. So the glycoprotein is the attachment protein. It attaches to the epithelial cells of bronchioles, which is your upper respiratory tract. And then once that is attached, the fusion proteins come along and attach right beside it. And then once those two attachments are made, the cell recognizes the virus and lets it in. And then once inside, it starts to replicate and then it exits. Okay, as you can see, this is the RSV entering the trachea of the subject. And then it, re it gets into the bronchioles and the epithelium. <coughs> Once, that, once at the epithelium, it enters and it goes to the individual epithelial cells. And then once there, the glycoprotein attaches. And then once that is fully attached, the fusion protein attaches right beside it. And then once those two attachments are made, the cell recognizes it and allows it into the cytoplasm to transcribe and repl replicate. And then as that occurs, it affects the surrounding cells and then just keeps on going until the body's natural processes can fight it off. Okay, so replication and transcription occur in the cytoplasm of the infected cell and it occurs through clathrin me mediated endocytosis. And so that's where um, the virus is converted to a plus strand for replication template. And transcription, as I said before, is it occurs by the RNA itself. Um, it packages itself and everything. There's no intermediate step in the protein synthesis. And the three proteins on the inside with the RNA that are important for replication and transcription and survival of the virus is nucleocapsid protein, phosphoprotein, and RNA polymerase. Okay, so this is a general diagram of the upper respiratory system of all humans, most, most humans. Um, okay, so as you can see, there's the trachea, and then there's the bronchial tubes, and then there's the lungs. So the virus is contracted through airborne stuff, so you breathe it in, and then as it enters your body, it travels to your bronchioles, where it infects your epithelial cells. This is an example of infected epithelial cells. If you notice right here, um, it's, a, it's not shaped like the rest of the cells around it. And it also looks like there are multiple nucleuses within this one cell, which is, which is syncytia, which is the main purpose of this virus. And that, at, that's just one example of it. But as the days progress, it will get worse and it will spread, as you can see here. Um, OK. so. These aren't human cells, they're lamb cells, but the res upper respiratory tract of lambs is very similar to humans, so that's what they did the research on. And so they took a lamb and they exposed it to the virus, and this is the first day. As you can see, the RNA is the black dots in the cells, or the RSV is the black dots in the cells, and it's very localized. There are a few outliers, but it's very localized on the first day. And then on day three, you can see that it's spread exponentially. It's still kind of localized to that one position, but it's definitely spread throughout the rest of the cell. And then on day five, you can see that it is spread very far and it's multiplied very times. So it's a very fast replicating virus. And then this example is of human epithelial cells and you can see the discoloration and the, the shapes are off. It's not uniform shapes and that's the RSV effect. Okay, so as of right there now, there's no vaccine that you can get for your infants for the virus and there's no cure. Um, the main treatment for it is to just manage the symptoms, to get the fever down, to deal with the pneumonia, to give the host body a chance to fight off. The, the virus, but teams are working to make a virus th 
through um, testing certain inhibitors. And these are a few of the inhibitors that have been tested so far. So there's gold nanoparticles, antibodies, and fusion inhibitors. And as you can see, they some of them bind to the attachment proteins and the fusion proteins so that those proteins can't bind to the cell that it wants to affect, so the epithelial cells. And there's also antibodies which like hinder it from getting to it. And then the fusion inhibitors which inhibit fusion to the epithelial cells. But if there's no treatment, it's infecting. Any questions?